Hey guys, it's Madison and welcome to this little vlog in which I'm kind of documenting my transition into focusing a lot more on Korean. For the past six months or so, Korean has kind of been taking the back seat to my other two languages, Japanese and Mandarin, but this fall I really want to kind of swing back around to having Korean as my primary target language. I can feel myself kind of getting rustier and rustier in my spoken Korean abilities especially, and I don't really want that to happen obviously, and so that combined with the fact that during my last challenge, the random number generator challenge, I did a lot more active Korean study than I had in quite a while and I really enjoyed it and kind of felt that passion bubbling up again for Korean. With all of that, I decided to kind of jump back in and really focus more on my Korean and try to do a lot more to particularly improve my spoken Korean skills and also my social interactions here in Korea. I'll go a bit more into all of my plans and thoughts and things that I'm doing towards those goals a bit later in this vlog, but for right now I'm going to focus on the first thing that's happening in relation to this social and spoken Korean stuff, goals, things that I'm working towards, and that is that I signed up for a Korean class. <laughs> Incheon, my little region of Korea, hosts these free Korean classes for foreigners several times a year, and I've been kind of debating about taking one of these classes since I moved here a little over a year ago, and in the past I kind of hesitated because I wasn't sure that I fit into any of the levels. My understanding and like vocabulary and that kind of stuff is fairly high, but I've been realizing recently, like I said, that my speaking is so rusty and so I figured even if the advanced class is kind of not giving me a bunch of new vocab and subject material, at the very least I'll be able to practice like communicating and actually getting Korean words out of my mouth and practicing like speaking more fluently, like fluidly and smoothly uh, about the things that I'm thinking and putting my thoughts into words basically. And so I decided to sign up for the advanced class. Like I said, this class is free, which is great and definitely helped me to actually make the decision to take the classes because I'm not losing out much money. I still have to buy the textbooks for the class, so it's not like totally 100% free, but the actual classes themselves are no additional cost beyond the textbooks. So that's happening tonight at 7. It's currently almost 6. So there's about an hour and 15 minutes until the class, the first class starts and I am basically a nervous wreck. <laughs> like I've mentioned before on this channel, I am definitely a hardcore introvert. And so yeah, basically signing up for any activity that requires any level of social interaction gives me anxiety. And so right now I'm definitely kind of a chaotic mess inside and I kind of feel a little bit nauseous because Again, meeting new people um, and especially because these classes are actually on Zoom, not in person. And so to me, I actually rather have that in-person experience because at least you can like sit down and like smile at people next to you and like maybe say hi to them before. But like Zoom, it's all through screens and it just seems so much more like disconnected. And so not great for my social anxiety. It is very convenient to be on Zoom because I don't have to travel anywhere, get all sweaty, any of that stuff. So love the convenience. Don't like the social anxiety aspect of it being in Zoom, but... That is happening, like I said, in just over an hour, and so I'm trying to uh, calm the nerves and not just be a socially anxious mess, but I'm also kind of excited, like deep, deep down beyond the anxiety, I am excited, and I was really excited when I first signed up, and then it's kind of turned more into that anxious feeling as time has gotten closer and closer to actually starting, but yeah. That's that, that's happening today, and yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not sure how much I'm going to actually show you of that lesson today because, you know, I'm already, like I said, anxious enough without adding like another camera staring at me in the face, but I'll probably try to film at least a little tiny bit of it, and I will definitely report back to say like how it all went and how I felt about it. I still need to unbox my books. They came in the mail a few days ago and I have not unboxed them yet. So yeah, in the hour-ish before the class starts, I think I will kind of put around and tidy up my room. So. At the very least, I can minimize the chaos outside in my environment, even if I can't minimize the chaos inside my body. And then if I have any extra time, I think I will try to like flip through the first little bit of the textbook just to like calm the nerves a bit by making myself feel like I'm preparing for the class in some way. I don't know. Like I said, I'm just kind of a, an anxious little mess. And so yeah, that's my plan. I will check back in with you guys later. All right, it is now 30 minutes until the class starts. I spent the last 45 minutes-ish kind of decluttering all of my major spaces in my room, taking out recycling, doing dishes, that kind of boring stuff. Um, but it actually worked surprisingly well for taking my mind off of the impending doom, I mean, class <laughs> that I'm about to take. And so pretty successful on that front. I'm now going to open this box that has my books in it. Grab some scissors. 
All right, so these are the books. I got the book and the workbook. So yeah, after flipping through the book a little bit and looking at the first little chapter in here, which is on joys and sorrows, so like about how to congratulate somebody or like express your condolences for them, like the actual vocabulary seems again very basic. Like there's words like to hug or like to be proud. And I'm wondering like, how is this a level five book like to be proud, like to hug? It's like very, very basic words. Like I feel like you watch a couple of rom-coms in Korean and like you know all those words anyway. But again, I'm gonna like withhold my judgment completely until I actually take a few classes and get a feel for what the actual level of the class is. Because again, I'm not sure, you know, the, how the professor designs the activities can really drastically scale how difficult the class actually is. And regardless, again, I can use this as an opportunity to just get back in the habit of turning my thoughts into actual sentences without hesitations and that kind of stuff. And, you know, I can bring my own vocabulary practice and expression practice into things, you know, even if we're not covering them in the book, just things that I've learned on my own and like make a point to actually include them in my sentences. So again, we'll see how it actually goes. And I will update you guys again after the actual class with how things went, my thoughts, feelings, and the level and that kind of stuff. So yeah, wish me luck. I still have like 20 minutes to just sit here in this anxiety until the class starts. Probably gonna try to distract myself with like a YouTube video and just not think about things until they start because again, just interacting with people I don't know just gives me, you know, a lot of nerves. I will never understand how like I'm so comfortable being a professor, like in the exact same position, like starting a new class. Like I get like a little bit of like jitters in the first day of like, oh, I wonder how the new students will be. But like, I never have this like meeting a new person, social anxiety with my own students, which is interesting. But like any other social situation outside of my own personal like teaching classroom, I just get so nervous. I don't know why, but yeah, gonna gonna try to avoid those nerves for 20 more minutes, like I said, and I will check back in with you later. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> All right, it's a few days later and I realized that I never actually sat down to talk about how the class went, so here goes. But basically, as you saw, I went into the class with a lot of anxiety. I'm just not sure how the environment of the class would be. Would it be awkward and stifling because no one is like speaking up on Zoom? I've taught a lot of Zoom classes like that and so I was really nervous it would be like that. Um, but basically, as soon as I entered the classroom, I think I was the second student to arrive and like right away the teacher was very friendly. She was kind of making small talk, which normally I hate, but in this case it was like all of us commiserating about how the weather is being back and forth these days and how it's so humid and annoying. And so right off the bat, I was put at ease, like, okay, this is very friendly. It's not like this formal, awkward, should I speak, should I raise my hand, that kind of environment. So thankfully, basically immediately, my anxiety like disappeared and I was very comfortable in the class. Um, so that was great. Like I suspected the actual like content topics of the class were not super advanced considering it's called an advanced class. But like I had hoped, I still thought that there were lots of opportunities to practice putting my thoughts into sentences and like off the cuff trying to give an example or define a word in that language, which actually can be very challenging. So that was pretty good. She basically said that, yeah, there's not gonna be any like new, exciting, advanced grammar in this class. We're basically just doing a lot of speaking practice and discussing different topics. So I was like, okay, I can be okay with that, even though it's not, again, like these deep societal issues or anything like super advanced like that. I'm still happy with the experience that it was. We started off with like self-introductions where she asked us like six different questions and we went around kind of based on her roster, just discussing ourselves. And then she would ask follow-up questions. Sometimes people would jump in and make comments on others. Yeah, based on those self-introductions, I was kind of able to gauge the levels of others, which I was also kind of worried about. I didn't want to be like super way above others. Um, but I also didn't want to be like super way below others either, you know what I mean? So I think there was one student who was more like just naturally fluent with her speech and like the sense that she was able to just like really smoothly make sentences off the top of her head, better at that than me. And then a couple others like at my level, I think, and a few others that were definitely a bit lower on the ability to like put stuff together or sometimes they had some comprehension mistakes. But again, like I wasn't too worried with how you know, I gauged the others' levels to be. I was pretty worried about that and, and whether or not I would like, you know, fit in with the others in the class because you don't want to be that one who's on one end of the spectrum, I feel like, in these situations. And the last thing about this class I wanted to mention that seems like a good opportunity is that the teacher mentioned that 
I think every week, she said, there is going to be some sort of writing prompt. And you're expected to do, I think, three throughout the 10-week little semester that we have. But she did say that you could do as many as you wanted and submit them and get feedback on them. So it seems like a great chance to get some writing practice as well, because like I said, my output is my weakness, basically. So my speaking is a bit rusty lately, and my writing has just always been kind of a hot mess. So I'm looking forward to the chance to get a bit more writing practice as well and get that feedback on that, which is awesome. So definitely looking forward to that aspect of the class as well. But yeah, that was me ranting about this class. Um, today is Wednesday, like I said, this class meets every Monday and Wednesday night. So today I have my second class of the week. I actually took a nap after class today because I didn't get enough sleep. And so I have not done my homework yet that she assigned. I figured I would kind of do it as the warm up to this class today anyway. So that's fine. I still have an hour ish until class. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that homework now i think it's just vocab practice and the vocab like i said was very basic so i'm not really worried it'll be a difficult homework but do want to go ahead and get it done and i will probably show you guys a bit of the class again maybe we'll see and i will check back in a little bit later <laughs> so after that second class, it's definitely becoming more and more clear that this is not a true advanced class. It is definitely the most advanced class that the Global Center here in Incheon offers. And I think it'll still serve my purposes, which primarily was to just get my voice out there more in Korean. And this is definitely going to do that, even if I'm not, you know, discussing the most deep or profound or um, complicated of topics. It is still me practicing, kind of explaining myself, giving examples, all that stuff, communicating in Korean. So check that goal. It will still be achieved. And like I said, there will be writing as well. And I'm excited for that as well, because my writing is not advanced. Um, so this more like intermediate level is actually probably where my writing belongs. And so I am looking forward to writing and getting feedback in that area. We haven't been given an essay yet. And I think earlier, actually, I misspoke and said there was 10 weeks of this class. It's actually like almost the same length as my semester. It's like 14 weeks, I believe. So I think every three classes, every like unit of our book, we're going to have an essay or writing prompt of some sort. So every three classes. So the next class, I should be getting some sort of writing prompt and we'll practice that. So yeah, like I said, speaking and writing, um, this class does look like it will be an opportunity to practice both of those output skills. And so even though it's not uh, the level I dreamed of, it is definitely still a level that I can make use of. And so, like I said, very satisfied that I signed up for it. And definitely in that second class, it became a lot more clear that there's kind of two levels of students in the class. Thankfully, I am in the upper level of those students, which is kind of the level that understands everything the teacher is saying pretty easily. We're able to participate again with relative ease. We're still practicing, but it's not difficult for us. And I think most of us in this upper level kind of joined in at the advanced level or in the upper levels. It seems like most of us kind of like came in and were kind of wanting to practice speaking a bit more. Then the lower group of students seems like they kind of came up from, from what I gathered at least through the other lower levels of the classes. They seem a little bit more unsure of grammar and like I mentioned before, the grammar in this class is it is it is very basic, I would say, grammar. But the students who are kind of in that lower group um, seem very confused or at least they kind of seem like they need more time and practice for those concepts, whereas the majority of the class could skip over it entirely and, and be good. So it's I can tell it's kind of hard for the teacher and I've been that teacher in that position where you have students of like different levels and it's kind of hard to meet both groups. If you're kind of catering to the upper group and like kind of having more free flow of conversation, then you're kind of leaving out the lower ones who don't know what's going on. And then if you just cater to them, then the upper group is really bored because we all know the grammar. So, you know, you kind of have to balance those two things. And so it seems like it'll be a good experience overall. And so I am looking forward to continuing it. But yeah, that was the first week of this class, at least. And we'll see how the remaining 13-ish weeks end up going. But yeah, originally this vlog was supposed to be about a lot more than just this one class that I signed up for. It was supposed to be about all the different ways that I'm kind of jumping back into Korean this fall and how I'm trying to socialize more in Korea, in Korean as well. 
and didn't end up being able to actually show that through filming anything. I was hoping to do like some Korean reading in this vlog, but this week has just been kind of a crazy hot mess for me at work. I basically lost access to the online classroom where I teach and like 80% of the things that we do in class involve some element of that online classroom. And so it was kind of a big pain in the butt to totally rework and redo my entire week of lesson planning and teaching. So. That was a hot mess, but thankfully today it all got sorted out. And so hopefully moving on, I can do a lot more Korean studying in my daily routine, but there are some Korean updates that I do have to share finally at the very end of this vlog. The first one being that I did sign up to take the topic again this year. I've taken this test twice before, once in 2018, once in 2020. I got level four the first time and level six the second time, which is the highest level. But my certification did expire last year and I do kind of want to keep that certification on my resume. So that's one reason I'm taking the exam again. And the other reason is just because I think it's a really great way to motivate myself. And also it's kind of fun just to see at any given time, like what this test says my abilities are, even though obviously no test is a perfect measure of anyone's language abilities. I think it is a kind of a fun way to at least kind of track progress over time and how things change. So that's why I'm taking the exam and that's happening in November, I believe, mid-November. And the new thing about this test is that it is actually the first ever IBT topic, topic IBT, which is the computer-based test. And so I'm really excited to see how this kind of changes things, especially in the writing section, which is actually also one of the big reasons I want to take the topic again, to kind of push myself to improve my writing. My writing scores have always been way, way, way lower than my other scores. I think last time, for example, I got 96 in listening, 96 in reading, and then like 55 in writing. So like almost half the scores of my other abilities. Keep in mind, of course, that listening and reading are both like input skills and writing is an output skill. So that's also a big difference there. But I really want to use this test as kind of a pushing, motivating factor for me to practice my writing skills, get better at writing. I've always been terrible at writing because I never want to practice it, but hopefully between this class and kind of the practice writing I'll get in that, and then also just other practice that I do on my own, I'll be able to really up my skills and see a jump in that score. Hopefully I'm putting it out there now as kind of a accountability kind of a thing. So we'll see how things turn out at the end, but that's my goal at least for now. And then the last couple of ways where I really want to kind of improve myself in terms of my Korean is number one, I really want to improve my reading and I just want to read a lot more. I feel like if I just read a lot more, I would really improve my skills naturally just from all the language entering my head and seeing words multiple times over and over again. I feel like I would really help improve my vocabulary. I just never seem to actually do reading in my daily life. And so I'm really hoping to get a lot more reading done. I'm thinking about doing a reading challenge or two this fall to kind of motivate myself again to get into that habit. We'll see how that turns out or what I end up doing, but thinking about that. And then finally, I'm really wanting to get more socially involved here. If you watched way back when, when I first made my like five regrets from my time in Korea back when I was still in the States, reflecting on the previous year when I had left Korea and kind of my year time spent in Daegu. One of the things I talked about a lot was just how I let my natural introverted stay at home self really prevent myself from getting involved. And I didn't really make a lot of new friends. I, I kept a couple of existing friends, but I didn't really reach out and explore new friendships. I didn't really get involved locally with like tennis or any other of those kind of activities. and. I really regretted that and because I didn't do any of those things and I kind of just went from work to home to work to home, I ended up using mostly English during my time in Daegu and, you know, flash forward a few years, here I am, I've been here in Incheon for a little over a year now, a year and a month, I think, and basically I've done the exact same thing here. Still, I have not gotten involved in local activities and I don't really have a lot of friends. I have a lot of friendly coworkers, but that's not the same thing as like an actual like life friend. I get along with my coworkers, but most of them are like five years older than me or more. And so even though I get along well with them at work, they're not really, you know, people that I would go along life with just because we're kind of in different stages of life. And so I really want to kind of get out there and explore activities and get involved. Finally, after a year of saying I'm going to do it, I'm determined to do it now. This week, I was really hoping to go to the tennis center and sign up for uh, lessons or something just to get involved there and kind of get my foot in the door and hopefully meet some people and get involved in some stuff involving tennis. But again, because of kind of the crazy work week that I had and just the fact that it was kind of hot and humid this week, I did not feel motivated to kind of make the extra pit stop on the way home to the tennis center. So put that off. Unfortunately, I was hoping to kind of show that and talk about it in this vlog, but putting it out there on the internet, again, accountability, that I'm going to be doing this in the next week or two. So 
Hopefully that is something that is on the horizon. I'm also looking into maybe some swing dancing or other kind of activities like that where I can, you know, go and have fun doing the actual activity and then hopefully meet people along the way that I can become friends with hopefully in theory. So we'll see how that goes, um, kind of improving my social life here in Korea and how successful that is. But the first step is just actually signing up and getting involved. So yeah, that's, that is a goal of mine in the very near future. But yeah, that has been it for this little vlog in which I kind of highlighted my shift back towards focusing on Korean. I am feeling very motivated and kind of excited for it, even though this week I couldn't do much of it besides the class that I showed you guys a lot of. Hopefully that class continues to go well into the future and that it is helpful for me even though it is not all that I hoped and dreamed it would be. And hopefully I do, you know, very soon get involved in those things that I keep saying I'm going to get involved in. Um, I will report back to you in the future about how that's going. But yeah, I think that's it for this week's video and I will see you guys next time. Annyeong!